So what, what, what are you cooking? <laughs> what are you cooking for us today, Dr. Amen? You know, I'm glad you talked about uh, being intentional because as we are in this winter season, a lot of times we have these issues, whether it's inflammation, we got stuff going on with dryness of skin, we have some immune system issues, of course. And for those of us who might be like, ah, it's post pandemic. I mean, you don't know when that will peek around the corner on you. So being careful to make sure all of your systems are functioning tip top is important. Part of the issue though, Professor Hunter, is that a lot of the fresh herbs that we would have access to and fresh foods just not available. So why not grow them, right? Like we could do that. Can we? we? Do, that. do Look, you have a garden? I, I don't, that's my, my, that's my goal. I've tapped my mom's husband who is like 80 years, the, the, the most amazing gardener. I've like, he grew something throwing some watermelon seeds in the corner. Now he's got a whole watermelon patch. And he wow. was like, he was like, Oh yeah, this came up this year. Just he not even meaning to. So I went down and he's, he's going to come and show me what I need to do. He every day, like I, I bought this pineapple. I was like, how do I make this? Grow? Like we are, we are in community. So yes, that is my goal this summer. Dr. Amen is to have a garden. So you got some pots, right? You got pot at your house. You got some pot at your house. <laughs> what, what kind of pot? What are you talking about? I'm joking. Do you have any pots like gardening pots, like planters? Yes, of course. Of course. Okay. Uh, it yes. looks like you have a beautiful plant sitting next to you. You got some pots. So what I, what I would encourage is that we use what we got till we get what we want. So we're just going to use some pots in the house and grow up some stuff and understand that as new world people of color, we're going to have to figure it out. We're, we're put into an environment where we have changes of season we may not have had in tropical and subtropical places. So we just got to get with it. So I wanted to just say there are like five must grow. To me, these are the five must grow herbs that we should have all year. And you could grow them right in your house. We don't have to wait for the summer. I heard you saying it's the summer. You waiting to throw some watermelon, walla melon seeds on the ground. <laughs> you don't have to wait. So what are the five? I, and I bought a, one of these kits, right? Cause I had intention. I was like going to be intentional. I said, all right. So they have these kits that you can get to grow different things in your house that come with the little, little starter pots. And yeah. uh, I have not you, you activated them yet. yet. I have not activated it yet. It's sitting there looking at me like, um, are we gonna I like how you put it. It's very scientific. You haven't activated it yet. I have not. Right? You didn't put any soul glow on it yet. Nothing. <laughs> it's just activated. sitting there waiting for me to crack open the box and take out the pots and do something. So tell me, tell me what I need to do. Which five? Because this one has seven in there. Actually, it's nine starter herbs. Which which Word. five of these right. are do I have to get? Well, sometimes that might be the problem, right? Like you get seven in a box and 11 and 12. It just seems a little daunting, right? But these are my five. I think five's doable. Five's a nice number. Uh, five, five can get it done. So I really like marigold. And I'm sure you're familiar. Lots of us are familiar with marigold flowers. We see them. We walk past them in a the garden. We're like, oh, that's nice, you know. But did you know, Professor Hunter, that they're edible? I did not. I use marigold to ward off certain pests in the garden. Mm -hmm. So you're supposed to plant them around your fruit trees, which I've done yes. one season. But now you're telling me I can eat a marigold? Yes, but see, you're more handy and green thumbed than you know. You gave information to people just now they may not be aware of about planting them around other plants. But marigolds are edible. I love edible flowers because what's more beautiful than flowers? And then when you're eating them, it's like, taking the little petals. It's like confetti. It's like edible confetti. And then it ha has this opportunity to heal you at the same time. So marigold is one of my favorite, and it's also referred to as calendula in case folks need to know that uh, name. And it's anti-inflammatory. It is great as an immune stimulant. It is awesome for like collagen and elastin in the body. So like our joints, our um, sinews and tendons, our skin. And in the winter, what's worse than the skin? Oh my God, 
It's like, you don't even know what to do with it. It's like, it drinks the oil. It's never enough. You know, you're drinking water. You don't know what's going on, but the, the element is harsh outside. I mean, it's, there's not a lot of water in the air to begin with. So you, you fight an uphill battle, but I really love Kalenja. It's easy to grow in the house. Marigold flowers are very easy in a pot. And if you feel like they're kind of getting dry and crispy on the top or not looking so great, just deadhead them. Just cut off the heads and they'll really will shoot up more flowers for you. Uh, I like to use it in an oil. Just put some of the flowers, dry it, put them in some jojoba oil or a little uh, maybe like shea, jojoba, coconut oil, vitamin E, like a little mix. And that is so good for the skin. That's why like one of the number one products in France tends to be calendula product and also shea butter. You do the math right? But <laughs> it's used a lot on babies' bottoms for diaper rash, those kinds of creams. So calendula is one of my big picks. It's just really sexy looking. It's beautiful. Herb number one, marigold or calendula. 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 Mm-hmm. Ja, the D-U means ja. Okay. Calendula. calendula. Yeah, it sounds like a friend down the street. Get her name right. Hey, calendula. Hey, girl. Hey, hey girl. Thank you for the skin. <laughs> yes. All Sounds right, like whatever. someone who can um, double Dutch really well. Calendula so, can definitely double Dutch and play the hell out of some jacks. <laughs> and soothe your skin. Uh, anti-inflammatory is all around excellent herb. And growing outside too is fantastic once it gets warmed up. Put some of that in your garden. Look, I don't want to see any more grass in people's garden, that's a waste of resources. People out there watering grass and fertilizing grass. Why? Why? You can't eat the grass. You can't eat, you're not a goat. You're not the goat like LeBron. You can't eat the grass. So you really need to use that resource of land to grow things. Now, we can't get out there right now. So what we can do in a lot of places that may be dry or cold or whatever is grow these inside. So Marigold's got my vote beautiful herb. All right. Number two. Number two. I like holy basil. I love it. Also known as Tulsi or Tulasi, which definitely sounds like your friend who's from New York, who's like, my parents named me Tulasi. (laughs) And it'll have a great meaning to it too. But in this case, Tulsi or Tulasi really means the most beautiful one, like the queen or most elegant one in Sanskrit or Hindi. And it is so named because this plant is an adaptogen, meaning it helps you manage stress. It's great for anxiety. It's great for sleep. So if we're having trouble with that, if we're foggy in the brain, whether it's long COVID we're dealing with or just long hours or modern life, Holy basil's the jam. Professor Anna, did you know that when you're at a wedding, typically like an Indian wedding, meaning people from India, that they may give you a gift of tulasi, of tulsi plants, holy basil plants, just a little plant. Everybody goes home with just a little plant. I see yours. And it smells amazing. It does. Yes. She is really the queen. She makes you want to rub her leaves and smell. Mm. So what I will say is that Tulsi, Tulasi is one of the things that is said from an indigenous perspective in, in India to contain the perfect balance of male and female, right? And so it typically was given to someone to help calm down too much yang, like too much fire, that pitta energy and help elevate the kapha, like that sort of watery, too sluggish energy. You know, you know what modern science has discovered? That holy basil contains hormones, helps balance hormones. But what? We already knew that. Boom. So there you go. (laughs) So holy basil is one of those. Um, You pinch it back. It'll give you more leaves. It helps with anxiety. It helps with, but look, that doesn't mean that you should stop taking whatever medicine you usually are taking to manage those things. But if you want a little extra help, if you want a little restful sleep action, or you have studies or things to do, holy basil is that one. I give it to my family. I just drug them out every night. (laughs) (laughs) You know, mommy is a break. I know, that's true. 
Y'all Absolutely. stop slipping, stop, stop slipping the alcohol in the baby's uh, little brandy in the baby's bottle. Give them some holy basil. Stop holy it. basil. And it grows like crazy. Look, the mint family is a big gang. You know what I mean? So thyme, oregano, parsley, no, not parsley, thyme, oregano, all kinds of mints, basil, uh, rosemary, lavender. They're all in the mint family. So they all have these really great properties and Tulasi basil, but this is specifically holy basil, not the basil we typically eat. Basils are mint. So super easy to grow. If you know how mint will just spread in your garden and just go bananas. So it's in a pot, which is a little more controlled. Okay. Number yeah. three. I like yarrow. Yarrow is one of my favorites. It's a classic. It's a classic. And if your grandparents had a garden, your great grandparents or your parents, even yarrow was probably in your garden. Do you see yarrow in your area? No, I'm, I'm my mouth is open. When you said your five herbs, yarrow did not make I didn't even think that it would make a list and marigold. So that now I knew basil would have to be there. Mm -hmm. But now please tell us about yarrow. Yeah, you see, I'm full of surprises. That's wow. what my ex-husband said. So Hilarious. I will say, <laughs> I will say that yarrow is one of my favorites from the way that it looks. When you look at these plants, they just tell you so much. It has this lacy structure to it that looks like feathers, the leaves. It just is. Wait, so wait Dr. Dr. I mean, I'm sorry. I, I didn't know. So I had to look it up. Mm -hmm. This was yarrow. I thought this was like baby breath, like the, the, the yellow version of baby's breath. Yeah. Y A R R O W. I've seen this in the gardens before. I thought mm -hmm. it was like what turns into baby's breath when we put right. together our, our floral arrangements. I yeah. thought it was like tiny, tiny versions of like, you know, carnations or something. Isn't it beautiful? It's it really is. beautiful. It's really beautiful. So we can and eat this? You can eat yarrow. Yarrow is, is wonderful. Not all plants can have a medicinal effect all the way from the rooter to the tutor, right? All the way from the flower or furthest leaf all the way to the root, but yarrow does. So the flowers can be used, the stems, the stalk, the root, all of it can be used. It's an antimicrobial. It helps cut back like bacterial issue and infection. And in fact, my great grandmother, who is a medicinal healer used to pluck the yarrow leaf and put it on an area that may be bleeding. Like you have a cut, scrape, scratch, and it would stop the bleeding. So it would also keep the bacteria from growing, right? So yarrow is such a strong medicine that in certain parts of the world, it's considered its own uh, harbinger of great things to come, a great omen. So in Chinese uh, have you heard of the I Ching or the I Ching, the yes. book of changes in China? Mm -hmm. So a lot of times the way to read that from the mathematic standpoint was to dry stalks of yarrow and you kind of throw them like an oracle, like a tarot card. Um, it's it's such a powerful medicine that people respect it for giving information from the creator. Like it's that powerful. Where do we get yarrow? Like, where's the best place to go to get yarrow uh, seed? Do we um, do we grow it from seed or do you grow it from the plant itself? Like, what's the best way to do this? You certainly can grow it from seed very easily. It is prolific as a plant. And if you plant it in your garden, watch out, baby. It'll just, it sh sends out runners and just like a mint or any other thing, it will take over your garden. But I'm the kind of person, I just throw stuff out there, uh, <laughs> When people tell me, oh, aren't you afraid this mint is going to take over your garden? I'm like, Lord, I hope so. Like, I want more medicine. I don't need grass out there. I don't need a whole bunch of sticks and stones and, and flowers that aren't medicinal. I feel like the medicinal things are just as beautiful. And I want that medicine. We need to get back to the connectivity with the earth that we had. And when we see our grandparents and great grandparents, they were rocking them gardens, baby. Yeah, wow. for sure. I am stunned by this I love uh, and, and we can we can eat the yarrow it's i'm reading yes. it's also it good for eczema a, it has a bit of a bitter flavor right and it's great for blood and detoxification it's it's that it's used for that so as my jamaican grandmother would say bitter in the mouth good for the blood so that's decolonizing our tongue we can't expect everything to taste like sugar and spice right so you were saying eczema 
Yeah, it's it's good for that, which it also is good for irritable bowel and stomach issues. But I also know that eczema and the gut connection, like those autoimmune uh, diseases that some of us suffer from are gut related. So it seems like yarrow is good for getting your gut together. Absolutely. It, it encourages the liver to release bile. Um, it also is something that I use personally, not just detoxification, but in like things for immune system. So like cold and flu blends to me need yarrow. And that's like an old school herbalist trick is that that herb that you may associate with something else should be used in that. So yarrow, grow some, get it, get some seeds. It'll pop right up. And you can grow it inside your house. Yes. All the things I'm giving you are things I would like us to get right now. Let's get it together. Okay. Right now in the house. Mm -hmm. Number four. I like anise hyssop. Anise spelled like anise seed, right? A-N-I-S-E and then hyssop, H-Y-S-S-O-P. So I like anise hyssop. Um, It's a short-lived perennial. If you pluck off the leaves, just like most of this stuff, it'll produce even more leaves. It wants to come for it, right? It's like, I'm here for this. I'm going to produce so much medicine for you. I like it for that. Um, I like using these kind of herbs for refrigeration and we'll do that in Nubia. If folks are in the Nubia community, I'm going to show how to preserve these herbs and use our modern methods of preservation with these old school methods of medicine so that we can have it all year long. Right. But I like anise hyssop. It has a flavor kind of like licorice, hence the name anise, but mint, like a mint with licorice. It's fresh and it's sweet. So it helps with sugar cravings. It's something you could use to make desserts with very easily. Maybe we can get Rock to do some desserts with us, uh, Chef Rock Harper. I Um, always thought this was a plant. I didn't know you could eat this. It's so beautiful too. It's purple. It's got all of it. It looks something like lavender or like one of those, you know, It is in that family. It is so gorgeous as a plant. We have it here at Calabash. We have an entire outdoor medicinal garden that people sit outside with in the outdoor patio. And it's one of the plants that attracts pollinators. So we're back in tune with nature. We need bees. We need that to happen. We need those butterflies. So we deliberately need to plant pollinating herbs, things that the, those animals want to come to, and that helps us in the long run. But Annie's hyssop is one of those nervines. Again, it's one of those herbs that helps our nervous system calm down a bit. It's great for that edge of anger. Like when you just feel a little too sharp, I know you professor Hunter have never felt that feeling, but when you, (laughs) but when your nerves just feel a little prickly, Annie's hyssop reminds you to just take it down a little bit. It's sweet. It sweetens the tongue. It sweetens your words so that whatever comes out just comes out a little differently. Like I still mean what I said, but here it is a little sweeter delivered to you, (laughs) more honey than vinegar. And it helps with those sugar cravings as we talked about, but also with children, when we find that whether it's nieces, nephews, whatever, when they're just being a little off the meter, like jumping around, they need to calm down. A little tea of that just takes it all the way down. They feel so much more relaxed. Mm. I am. Mm, this is I, I, I used to buy butterfly plants because I love butterflies. Mm-hmm. This is a butterfly plant. It is. It I didn't is. even have to. I could have got I didn't know I didn't have to spend all that money on know. a butterfly bush. This now we amazing. know it's also good for colds and flu and stomach u- upset. So imagine if you're having this for stomach upset and it's great for your nervous system. This is a perfect after dinner tea. Aren't your guests going to be so impressed when you go to your garden, which is on your windowsill or other parts of your house where it's getting sun? It's just a pot inside your house, but you're going to pluck off some fresh leaves and rinse them and make a little tea for them or a little muddled lemonade. And they're like, "Ooh, look at you, Pikachu. So that's what we want. We want to impress the folks around us. And it's a teaching moment right? We've all been deputized to go out and give this information and there's no better way to deliver it than in the people's mouths. Number five. Number five. I like, and these are in no particular order, by the way, I love all of them, right? It's like having five children. None is your favorite, 
wink, that's wink. That's a lie. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> right. Funny. So I like Spilanthes. Spilanthes is one of my favorites. Um, I like Wait, it a pause, lot. Pause, pause, Dr. Uh-huh. Dr. Amin. Spilanthes? Yes. Yeah, Spilane that. Spilane where Spilanthes is from. <laughs> so Spilanthes is, um, you'll find it in South America indigenously. You'll find it in Africa indigenously. And this is a really beautiful herb that kind of cascades over the pot. So if you want a hanging plant and Instead of just the regular hanging plants you see all the time, the Spilanthes is going to crest over the pot and just look very elegant. It's anti-inflammatory. It's beautiful. People are going to be impressed with it when you start making those little clippings again and just making something out of it. Um, I love it for its anti-inflammatory capacity. So if you're having pain in the joints, if, if you wake up and you turn, if you're turning your wrists right now, don't do it if you're driving, but if you turn your wrist around and you hear a snap, crackle, pop, or in your neck, as you turn your head around and kind of roll your neck, there's a problem. If your knees are clicking or your ankles, whatever, there's some inf- inflammation in the joints. There may be uh, some tissue issues. Spilanthes is my jams. I like it a lot. Wow. Easy and to it's grow. it's beautiful. It, it is, is so beautiful. beautiful. I- yeah. So we can put that in a pot the way we might do like some cre- creeping ivy. Or, yes. You know. you know, the one that is called wandering dude. Yes. It used to be <laughs> yes. called something yes, else. Something else. Yes. Yes. <laughs> we can't the say wandering that. dude. Um, instead, use the spilanthes. People will ask you what it is, but also you can pluck this medicine off. Let's stop giving water and pot and time resources to things that are not edible. I'm a huge fan. In my garden, 99% of things are edible. If I can't eat it, it's not getting planted or at least use it. Like I have witch hazel instead of regular old hedges. Like I need medicine. And witch hazel so beautiful with the yellow. I like we we are oh this is decolonizing our garden right now because as you're talking you know i'm, I'm imagining spring, spring coming and you know what kind of bushes because i'm about to do some landscaping i want to have plants and flowers that serve and to your point we should apply that same logic to our lives and people in our lives in terms of giving energy to things that are not feeding us Absolutely. That means people, people too, people too. I this love Spilanthes for that. Spilanthes is also known as the toothache plant, right? So when you chew it, it's going to be like a little bit um, like stimulating, like numbing, but also like a little prickly feeling. I don't mean in a bad way. It just has this different kind of way of treating your mouth. And so typically it was used for like gum irritation, toothache. I mean, you got to imagine people may not have had the access to Ambisol, but this is the old school Ambisol. So we want that. We want those medicines. 